Okay, we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, Developing Young Indian Women to be Entrepreneur Session uh, for the Oasis uh, India Conference. Uh, we still are missing one panelist. Uh, we will probably uh, just uh, let her join as and when she joins. Uh, I am Parag Amin. I'm your moderator today for this panel. I'm the founding director and chief mentor of iCreate, which is a private public partnership in India, uh, which has been envisioned, established, and uh, supported by the Prime Minister of India. Uh, the topic of our panel discussion today, as defined by Horasis, is developing young Indian women to be entrepreneurs. Uh, generally speaking, it's often difficult for Indian women to leave home to learn new skills. Uh, the traditional family pressures are home first. Uh, how can we encourage and support more women to pursue STEM and aspire to be entrepreneurs? Uh, how can we make learning for women exciting as it will be the future uh, of economic growth and the key to supporting their, their future family lives? Uh, how can we make the world of work a little more safer for women? So that is the problem statement uh, as defined by Horasis for this panel. Uh, with that extremely well-defined statement and my very biased view that I possess through the lens of I create, uh, I have come across some phenomenal women entrepreneurs in India who are building some amazing enterprises. And these women are tribal women, uh, they're mothers, they're housewives, but most importantly, they're extremely hungry entrepreneurs at heart. Uh, that too in STEM. But, I'm also, uh, I, but I also know that I create is, is uh, it does not represent the broader India. Uh, it does give me a great deal of hope that the, that the tide in India is turning and that too fairly rapidly as it pertains to young women aspiring to be entrepreneurs and that twin step. Uh, we have four amazing panelists, from which three of them are present on this panel here, uh, uh, and they have extremely diverse experiences and views. Um, uh, each of them will start out with approximately a three-minute opening remark, following which I will pose some questions to each of the panelists. The panelists will then close with a tangible recommendation uh, for, for the participants uh, here, and we will then open the floor for broader questions. And the remainder of the time, if any, will be yielded back to the panelists for uh, additional debate uh, along the lines of what we have already discussed. Um, so I'm going to introduce the panelists, and then they will give their initial remark, and then I'll move over to the next panelist, and they'll introduce them, and they'll give their remark. Uh, so, Jayashree, we're going to start with you. Okay. Jayashree is a corporate uh, scientist at 3M and leads applied technology development for industrial adhesives and tapes division. She joined 3M in 93 after an MS and PhD in chemical engineering from Clarkson University in New York. And she currently holds 72 patents for a variety of innovations with several additional patents pending. Jayashree is a distinguished alumni award recipient from her alma mater REC3 in India, where she earned her BTEC. Jayshree was appointed 3M's first ever Chief Science Advocate in 2018, and she's using her knowledge, expertise, and experience to advance science and communicate the importance and benefits of science in everyday life. She's also a member of the Carlton Society, which is the 3M Science and Engineering Hall of Fame. Jayshree is the fourth woman and the first female engineer to be inducted to this Hall of Fame. In 2020, she was awarded Society of Women Engineers' Highest Achievement Award. Jayshree is an author of a book, The Heart of Science, Engineering Footprints, Fingerprints, and Imprints, published by the Society of Women Engineers, and all the sales proceeds go to the scholarship for underrepresented minority women in STEM. Uh, she also featured in a docu-series titled Not the Science Type that premiered at the 2021 Tribeca Film Festival. Jayshree has two kids, and her husband is also a 3 mr With this sort of a profile, this woman is on steroids. So I, I, I can't believe anybody that says Indian women are homemakers. They can't do this. They can't do that. Jayshree is an example that says yes. absolutely not. The floor is yours. Thank you, Parag. Uh, I would have been taller if I had used steroids. I'm only five feet on a good day. <laughs> um, you know, going back to the point that you made, just last week I saw some numbers that indicate that India is doing quite well for the number of girls and women in STEM education. So that's great. But we, I guess, also need to track and see what they end up doing with that education and are they able to have fulfilling careers as professionals and entrepreneurs and what are the barriers to that. 
So in my role as chief science advocate, I get to be part of this global research that we do, uh, India included, and it's called the 3M Data Science Index. And what we found is that the public wants more women involved in STEM and innovation, and the public realizes that diversity is a key factor for innovation in STEM. So I think if we were to make a wholesale change, and I talk a lot about this in my book, I like to say that it's time for some good old steam cleaning. S is for shattering stereotypes. And really the myth that only men can be scientists and only men can be leaders or only men can be entrepreneurs. And more importantly, that the only way men do things is the right way and is the default. And that notion, I believe, especially needs to be shattered in male-centric fields like STEM and in a strongly patriarchal culture like ours. And then T is for telling the wholesome story about science. I feel that it has been very content focused and that works well for men and boys, but to inspire more girls and young women to connect with their uh, community oriented mindset of helping others, we have to focus on that part also. The pro social goals and the elements of social change and entrepreneurship. And frankly, in this younger generation, girls and boys are inspired by that. E is for environment and exposure. Across the spectrum, again, showing possibilities, providing access, addressing myths about, you know, loner scientists or a loner genius moment. All these things hold women back. And you have to emphasize that in STEM and in careers like this and entrepreneurship, you can have mentors, you can collaborate. And all of this will increase commitment to continuing and contributing and keeping their engagement and enthusiasm in these fields. A is for allies and advocates. Men need to be playing that role. It's not a zero-sum game. We will all benefit from it. And now it's time for men to stand up and be allies and vocal advocates at work and at home. Girls need to see more young women in science and tech roles, and young women need to see more role models and entrepreneurs succeeding and believe that it is an environment that will allow them to have fulfilling careers and lives. And finally, M is for metrics and measures. Let's just face it, some things will not change without that. And we can all talk a good game, but the numbers stay exactly where they are. So many leaders of communities, of companies, of countries for that matter, have set some bold diversity goals and are making it happen and forcing a change in mindset with these metrics and measures. At the end of the day, we all have to join forces to push this train on the right track, and it will be a steam engine that could. And that's what I like to believe. And I look forward to more discussion with these esteemed panelists. Wow, thank you. That that's that's a very strong definition. Stem to steam. I mean, that that's that's powerful. Uh, next, I think uh, Preeti, I'm going to come to you. Preeti is the founder and director of Strive High Private Limited, a boutique soft skills training company based in Singapore. She is a management uh, psychologist and uh, focuses on driving results for individuals and client organizations through consulting, training, and coaching. Uh, uh, she has an MBA and master's in psychology and doing a corporate career spanning over 20 years with reputed banks and other multinational companies in different business management positions, marketing and training have helped her develop a well-rounded perspective on leadership. She has trained senior managers from many companies ranging from banking, insurance, shipping companies, as well as the civil services commission officers in the Philippines. She's passionate about developing women leaders and delivering empowering programs that she designs primarily for women. Priti was recognized globally and awarded uh, uh, one of one most fa fabulous global coaching leaders at World Human Resource Development Congress and Woman uh, Super Achiever Award at the World's Seventh World Leadership Congress. She proudly serves as a member of the advisory board of the University of Liverpool Management in the UK. She's a dynamic speaker, a presenter, a facilitator, and a trainer. She regularly travels to speak at conferences and conventions across ASEAN uh, countries. With that very extremely diverse and well-rounded background, Preeti, it's your time. Thanks a lot for such a detailed and uh, great introduction, Prague. I really appreciate that. Uh, uh, greetings to all the uh, to all the, the three uh, esteemed panelists, um, and of course the chairperson uh, Prague and all the participants who are joining us today due for this uh, global conference. And since the conference is focused towards Indian women, so I would like to talk a little bit uh, more about uh, the the what is the current situation of uh, Indian women and what are the challenges that they face? 
So we know that Indian women or the women of Indian origin have ma have made their mark as political leaders, and some of the most revered women uh, leaders like Indra Noi. Dr. Swati Mohan, who leads the guidance and navigation and control operations of NASA's Mars 2020 mission, and most recently, uh, uh, Sirisha Bandla, who became the third Indian origin woman to fly into the space. Uh, we probably speak about many women CEOs like Chandra Kochar, Indu Jain, Arundhati Bhattacharya, etc. So we are seeing increased particip female participation in tech companies, engineering colleges, etc. So when I talk to you know people in organizations or leaders, uh, they give up. They give me these examples in this, and and the the notion that I get from a lot of people is the gender gap. Is it really a real issue? Because there are women that we see their increased participation is quite obvious in all different areas. So have the times times changed? And 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 to to emphasize how much has the time changed? I would like to refer to the Global Gap、uh, Gender Gap Index released by World Economic Forum, which has which they have been releasing since two thousand and sixteen, which benchmarks one hundred and fifty six countries. Now, gender gaps in educational attainment and health and survival has nearly closed. However,、uh, the gender gap in economic participation and and opportunity has uh, has uh, you know closed only fifty eight percent, and it is estimated that at the current rate, it will take around two hundred and sixty seven point six years to close this gap. Now, um, um, uh, just now.、Um, You know, uh, uh, we heard uh, uh, that women are uh, uh, kind of participating a lot in STEM, and how their participation in STEM is beneficial for the tech companies.、Uh, on, on the latest uh, uh, data by All India Survey on Higher Education report suggests that the gender gap has narrowed down in comparison in the past few years. So the female students are actually almost fifty percent、um, of the total enrollment of higher education, and the and 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 government of India has played a huge role in that. Now, despite facing the challenges, women are moving up. However, women constitute only fourteen percent of the two hundred and eighty thousand personnel in STEM in India's research development institutions. In addition, women's participation in the workforce is is、uh, is mostly at the entry level, and we see that the numbers decrease as we go higher in the hierarchy, the manager and the and the,、uh, positions. The question is that is this only uh, uh, an issue pertaining to India? We all know that it is not. It is a global issue. Um, one would have thought that you know, uh, if women have the flexibility of working from home, perhaps the situation could get better, and、uh, because they would be able to do things, uh, 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 manage both the fronts together. But、uh, we have seen that women are uh, uh, dropping. They are,、uh, as per one of the research by Azim Premji、uh, University,、uh, it says that that、uh, women in India are seven times more likely to lose work. Now this is、uh, and and especially in lockdown in US also the data is very very similar. So the question is that why are women dropping out? And like it was highlighted by、uh, my my co-panelist earlier that、uh, you know these these other the STEM、uh, all this all the indicators by uh, 3M um, are are really fabulous. The, we need to understand the core issues that uh, that uh, bother women, and one of the biggest reason is that women voluntarily engage themselves in taking care of family, and involve themselves in chores like cooking, cleaning, grocery shopping, taking care of elderly. And these jobs they play an integral role in developing and nurturing the society. If they don't do that,、um, uh, the society will not grow. And this is a、uh, and these are hugely comprised of the unpaid work that women do. And women, unpaid work definitely subsidizes the cost of taking care. But what does it? What impact does it have on women themselves? So financial independence makes them more reliant on their partners. It ruins their self confidence that they take care of themselves. It uh, uh, it impacts their uh, uh, you know uh, decision making. 
and they uh, they cannot seek loan and they cannot uh, the ability to seek loan or you know use their uh, talent to actually come up as an entrepreneur that you know we are trying to see so the question is what like like it was highlighted earlier that we have to address the core issues why women are dropping out it is important that women are given equal opportunities and and that they have a better level playing ground both at work and home so um, that is uh, something that i wanted to highlight and with this will go forward um a big um, and i thought this was very important because a number of times if we do not acknowledge the problem if we do not accept that this is the ground reality then we don't find the reasons about how to actually overcome them thank you thank you priti <clears throat> next we have uh, we actually we're going to have a little bit more time for engagement and debate because our fourth panelist has not shown up so if she does not show up we will have yeah. her time yielding back to the three of you yeah. next we have uh, mr rl narayanan also known as rln uh, it's much easier for me to just call you rln uh, he's a thought leader involved in education entrepreneurship and economic evolution he has over 20 plus solid years of experience in impact financial services business planning development and management currently he's working on not for profit activities having an impact in healthcare and education in collaboration with healthcare technology innovation center of iit madras part of the job involves helping the complete startup ecosystem in education in tech in healthcare and in social impact is in the process of building a 100 million us dollar fund connecting north america israel and india something that's extremely very close and 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 i'm passionate about that as well uh for the past 3 years as vice chairman of gkr foundation a family office and nonprofit involved in running several educational institutions he has managed assets over 50 million dollars apart from advising select few high ultra net worth individuals in india us and the uk with assets over 100 million dollars ireland has a mission to impact 1 million people by 2025 and empower 1 million families he continues to deliver life changing lectures to students from schools to top indian universities he holds a masters in applied psychology and an mba specialized in marketing and finance uh ireland your views uh, i'm extremely uh, uh, happy that frank chose uh you and i as as male participants on this panel and this is not a singularly woman uh panel that just has no uh view from 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 the the men fraternity so uh over to you uh, <coughs> greetings and best wishes to all today's guru puti ma here so uh by prayers as you rightly said uh all by profile you have already discussed anybody further they can look at uh, linkedin profile of mine at rl nadayan Uh, Parag, uh, 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 welcome Jaisi and welcome Preeti. I'm uh, totally inspired to listen to both of you <laughs> uh, in the respective careers, the impact you have created, the life impact, and you are role models uh, currently for the uh, Indian girls. As today we are uh, discussing about uh, the young entrepreneurs in India, and Parag, as you rightly said, see uh, uh, what what is happening today. As uh, uh, Frank, I have to thank Frank for this uh, that we have they uh, put with us both uh, both of us in this panel. So we are going to raise our voices today in this through this platform for those people who don't have the voices. Like so many Indian people, especially the young Indian uh, entrepreneurs, how we have to develop the system. If you look at this, and today is a very very appropriate day. Uh, especially i would say this because india is in the cusp of digital transformation and i believe personally after uh, my experiences several years of experiences and talking to in students in girls that uh, digital transformation truly truly puts uh, women and one both equal in the eyes of digital age uh, digital transformation in the age of computation both in fact uh, women excel more so what i would say that if you look at uh, why i am calling today a special day is because yesterday we had zomato listing in india uh with a market cap exceeding lakh and 25000 crores approximately close to 3 to 3 billion dollars uh, for an internet company to do so and uh, last year total indian startups which received funding uh, was uh, 16 startups became uh, unicorns in the la- in the last year and uh, in last 6 months 12 billion money was raised by the startups it's very very good for the indian system and totally from 2011 to 2021 we have uh, around about 52 startups uh, which are unicorns 
which is again as i said that india is going through digital transformation and a massive wealth creation is happening that is good thing to start today but the bad thing is in this entire 52 uh, startups is only one which is led by one as it's palkuni nayak i know her uh, she would have been successful in any area of the uh, things which she would have done she was heading a bank a largest bank uh, and uh, her startup nayka is one of the unicorns except for her there are only hardly seven or eight other unicorns which have women as co-founders yes baiju is having one uh, of course uh, it's founder's wife uh, so i would not count that uh, as one but if you look at the statistics this is uh, staggering so women bring the social inclusiveness uh, and uh, the various other aspect uh, uh, i find that that is lacking so the startups do a lot of wealth creation but india uh, for poverty elevation as i have personally worked in these programs uh, and personally spoken to uh, people stakeholders all the stakeholders i would say that uh, startups don't count for massive employment generation in india msmes do so out of 60 million msmes in india uh, 63 million 96% are proprietary owned and out of that i would say that uh, only 20% are women women led enterprises and uh, in this 20% as uh, preeti was rightly pointing out if you see the uh, uh, inclusiveness uh, it's again it's pathetic but again if you see the perspective of uh, uh, loan creation especially whether they whenever they apply for loan uh, only few get it and that to only 68% of the uh, uh, amount which they require they get it and the rejection rate for women especially for uh, uh, every 100 application 19 uh, rejections are there in women and eight rejections are there uh, in uh, men so the double the rate, almost over a double 200% uh, women get rejected in loan because the banks think that they will not be able to repay or because they don't have a proper collateral in india the property as jashti was rightly uh, pointing out we are in a society uh, in this society we don't accept uh, and uh, the property rights are not directly given to women up to now so they don't have a collateral proper collateral to give and raise money so these are so many entrepreneurs i myself i talk they they find it in spite of the government schemes in, in spite of the uh, government subvention a lot of people red tape and uh, procedures are there that women find it really really difficult especially uh, the msmes why i say msmes is if you a, a, a particular woman get creates an msme the employment opportunity provided for more women is much more so i would say that even google did uh, and brain company did a research they found that uh, india would uh, have enterprises msmes especially creating 150 to 170 million jobs out of women led entrepreneurs by 2030 that is phenomenal so if you are going to create uh, and if you look at workforce as jayshree was pointing out as preeti was pointing out india is again way 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 behind even brazil and china china is close to 68% and uh, uh brazil is around 48% we are get to cross 30% so we are way way behind uh, these countries in uh, the workforce representation and massive poverty elevation as i say repeatedly say that is will come by focusing on the msmes led by women women entrepreneurs and i would definitely through this uh, platform i would definitely recognize the work done by the, the current prime minister modi because for the first time we have a women entrepreneurship platform that is wep.gov.in and uh, i would like our panelists on all the people who are listening to go and have a look at it and more and more women led uh, companies across the world including 3m i would recommend gaishi to support women through this platform they are it's it's, uh, it's politically neutral they are empowering all the women registered on the platform so most corporates across the world should use this kind of powerful platform just because through my work uh, in all these years i found that what a government can do as a machinery uh, the corporates and csrs or other things cannot do uh, they can at a stroke reach out to uh, millions of millions of people in all the villages and that is what the program the platform does and lastly i would like to say that and what were is uh, happening today as i said that uh, this is common not only in india even if you look at us uh, the uh, the kaufman research says that uh, in 2018 the number of male led entrepreneurs who have raised money equals just the statistic says staggering 18 19 years of uh, all the money raised by women entrepreneurs all the money 
they women men had entrepreneurs raised in 2018 itself it it clearly shows that the bias is not only in india but it is across the world but we are specific to india so lastly again the last point of mine is what gandhi ji said that through this chakra through the will uh, through the wheel it's not only uh, a pure and uh, thing but it also means of transformation the wheel also implies transformation so today through in uh, uh, entrepreneur uh, women led entrepreneurship we are looking at transformation of this country not only this country uh, we can develop when we can transform the world because vasudeva kutumbakam whenever india does something it always does for the world including the vaccine program which we have all seen so i would say that uh, women led entrepreneurship led development in india is very much uh, happening and we have to be as stakeholders participate it and make this as a movement and businesses may fail but movements do not today let us make this the start for this movement thank you Th- thank you uh, arlen for that uh, uh, amazing viewpoint of yours i think we go into the question session here i think there is uh, we have probably about uh, about 15 16 minutes left uh we the uh you have a strong view both as a successful woman professional and a mother uh as to what governments employers and even families at home uh should do to equalize the playing field for women uh can you please uh, share with us some of your views and preferably with a like a tangible uh, uh kind of like an outcome for women if if there was another woman that feels all these pressures she feels maybe the systems are not aligned for her she feels that the workplace is not fair to her or she feels the household uh, she she is unevenly burdened what what is the solution then i mean should she succumb should she fight should she just move on i mean what what what's your your viewpoint and quickly please because i want to get to everybody yeah that's a wonderful question i think that really goes to the crux of the problem about the problems that women are actually facing the when women go back to work they are generally doing two things they are still carrying their families with them the responsibilities at home the work that they have to do or the chores that they do the responsibilities that they take they continue to carry that worry and that pressure along with them at home when we uh, when they come back uh, so 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 uh, when the uh, employees look at women and especially employing married women or women with children they already go through a bias from them that because they are looked upon as somebody who will not be able to commit 100% as compared to the men now this is a bias that they face and especially when women aspire for leadership roles it is it is not a level playing field in the sense that it is already assumed that perhaps she will not be able to uh, commit as much time and uh, uh, to the, uh, to the uh, uh, as a leadership uh, in the leadership role so there is that bias that she uh, she faces and also um i you know when i talk to some of the bosses in the uh, uh, in the organizations people in the um uh, in the higher roles the that uh, what does uh, uh, they they say that you know that for women uh, they cannot expect uh, if they are trying to fight for equal rights they need to also contribute in a similar manner the thing is that we need to address and understand that women need the job and to be in these senior positions as much as as much as the organizations need them their contribution because the research has stated repeatedly that by having the, you know a diverse workforce especially women's involvement organizations do fare better so that means that it is also an organizational need to actually create an environment which is very pro women uh, so that it supports them and now it say by doing things which are more task oriented or rather than just coming back coming to the office um you know holding them accountable for the job that they have to do rather you know rather than um always you know uh, being present in the office or things like that so some certain changes have to happen um while acknowledging the challenges that women face but the number one thing is that women at home when they come back they still have to do the second job which is taking care of their families now if they continue they whereas uh, many a time we would see that their their male counterparts are on the contrary able to you know focus on other things 
so we need as a society to grow up and we need to make that and level playing ground there and make it um, uh, encourage our girls to take up and participate um, uh, uh, and the workforce and for that we have to help our male chil our, our our children our men to take up the roles which the women do at home so as women are growing as in, as employees in workforce men also need to grow in terms of helping them and being an equal partner and supporting them at home and we need to show this by lead by example so the fathers today they 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 you know women did not were not born uh, you know nurturing the family so if the woman has to breastfeed a guy can uh, and uh, very well do the bottle feeding so if we try to show that you know that the jobs can be taken by both the partners we will be role modeling for our kids and and the job will not be gender specific jobs jobs will be gender neutral Okay. Giving them a level playing. Thank you. Well, well, thanks for your viewpoint. I think uh, uh, Jayshree, coming to you, you mentioned some research that 3M has done. Can you delve deeper into that and tell us more? Uh, what are your findings, and and especially as it pertains to India, and what what is 3M doing about it? Yeah. So this research, which we call the 3M Data Science Index, this is. Uh, started with 14 countries including india now it's 17 countries including india and what we had found initially when we started it that science was a little underappreciated science was taken for granted behind the scenes so the public wasn't really acknowledging science as much however with the pandemic what we found is science has been at center stage scientists have been at center stage and what we found is that the public perception around science is changing and the public is now recognizing the importance of science they now appreciate its impact on our health on the health of the environment and the importance of diversity in stem and uh, data like uh, preeti was pointing out is is becoming more important where people are seeing oh is that the connection i need more diversity in innovation and that's the way i can get it and that's why we feel now is a very important time to advocate for stem and to advocate for women and underrepresented minorities because people believe that scientists during covid times have inspired the next generation to pursue stem education and careers but there is concern that we don't have enough diversity and that we aren't doing enough to inspire girls and women and in fact that will hurt innovation and in fact results also show that women themselves trail in the positive sentiment for science so we have to work on women as well so stem is critical for our future diversity is critical to innovation and gender equity is critical diversity so just as an example uh, on the things we did we just released last month our docu series which was produced by 3M called not the science type and what it does is features four women in stem and it shows how they confronted stereotypes and bias and blaze trails and i'm honored to be one of the women highlighted another one also of indian origin is young gitanjali rao who is only 15 time kid of the year but she's a stem promoter innovator and entrepreneur in her own right at a very young age so we really want to have this docu series inspire many many to do the same and so you can access it at 3m.com/notthescientetype that is that is amazing now how large is 3m's presence in india do they have like a, do they have an incubation cell or do they have any sort of those facilities that not only just indian women but indian entrepreneurs in general can can affiliate themselves with Yes, we have a very specific program, and I know you wanted uh, me to mention that, uh, and I can uh, uh, right now. You know, in fact, at three in India, we sponsor what is called the Young Innovator Challenge Award, and this is in collaboration with CII, Confederation of Indian Industry. And what we do is we look to award funds for innovative ideas, and it is now in the eighth year. and have awarded more than 40 young innovators and this year specifically we are seeking submissions that mirror the hope of a resurgent india with the potential to restore and reshape society as we come out of the pandemic and the focus is on sustainable development goals and connecting young people's work to sdgs and that's a strong point so check it out 3m young innovator challenge and we look to award product service and a specific category on rural and inclusive innovation amazing awesome Ireland like me I know you also believe that overall women are better uh, than men in many many areas um right uh, how can these inherent capabilities and strengths that women have allow them to equalize their footing in otherwise a pretty uneven playing field 
broadly speaking. So what, what is it that they can do with what they have that, that truly can actually create them as differentiators? And I'm a firm believer of that because I personally have hired a lot more women in my organization. My India office is headed by a woman and she's been with me for 22 and a half years. She's a managing director of my India office. And without her, I, I would be nothing in India. My India office would not operate without her. So I'm a firm believer, but there's nothing that I did for this woman. I didn't do anything special for her. It is what she brought to the table that completely flabbergasted me and said to me, I don't think any of the men can do what she's doing. So, so your views on that. And then if there's something tangible that you can close with, we'll give the, give the uh, last statement to Preeti to give something tangible from her end. And I think that will be the clock on us. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you, Frank. See, as I said that uh, in the opening statement, that economy, if you look at this the program, is uh, this uh, special program today is developing in Indian, in Indian women for entrepreneurship. So as I said that broadly the startups, the economy, the wealth creation aspect of the economy is taken care of by the startups. And the employment generation activity, which is much more crucial to country like India, uh, is done by MSMS. So as uh, we have already discussed the kind of uh, problems faced uh, by these uh, MSMEs especially, and even post-COVID, they had problem. And I had interviewed section of society especially for this program. I found that, uh, as I said, the loan state uh, the, the, uh, and the inclusiveness in finance. So if you have to generate a start, create a startup or MSME, you need funding. And in funding, we find clear biases, as uh, Preeti was also pointing out uh, exactly, and uh, Daisy was also mentioning that these biases come from a psychological as a psychologist i will be able to connect with it more because these are all uh, biases which are not direct and uh, uh, but when it comes to the vc funding also there is a very big gap as i said I already pointed out to the statistics of how women are uh, it's just 1.5 percent of the women who have got funding in the entire uh, last two years uh, women that and uh, the situation with the msme as i pointed out it's very very bad uh, it's not inclusive so no, no matter whatever we can speak today, but the statistics uh, are very, very poor. But how we look at the future, that is what I would like to take this opportunity for. So we need to create an aspect, especially what Kadi has been doing, what uh, Kadi Gramo did, especially for women uh, entrepreneurs, and they are able to bring out them, whatever, because in rural employment generation and rural activity inspiring rural women, Kadi has played a very, very big role, starting from Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> He, the, the kind of importance he gave for women empowerment is uh, is playing even today. Whatever we are, uh, whatever is happening is in the country, especially because of Kadi, is completely inspired from him. Uh, I would say that uh, if you have to do a change, uh, including STEM, uh, uh, where we have implemented STEM education in schools, in rural schools in India, and I find the ideas, especially the young women, uh, have is very much inspiring and it's, they, they are able to connect with farmers, they are able to connect with the local society, they are able to come out with a local solution. So, and even in business, so if, how you develop an uh, Indian women, how you develop this? We need to have a change in the mindset. Uh, what is that we have to do is uh, entrepreneurship frees women completely from the barriers of the society. I would say that especially in the digital age, it completely frees them. They can work in that time, they are the boss. They can give employment and only a woman, no matter we can speak all this day to day, uh, but we can't understand the emotions and the pain of women as men. So only women can understand the pain and difficulties of uh, women. So women-led entrepreneurship is very much needed for transformation of the society as a movement I pointed out. So if you have to do that, you have to start at the end age, especially in the schools at seven standard, six standard level, they have to be given training for business. They have to be training, give, given training at the school level uh, to exposure to Kadi, exposure to uh, self-employment programs, how they can be independent financially uh, in various other things. The vocational training, I would say, I am a vocational student, so I know how to run business right age from uh, when I was 15, 16. So that inspired me to take a step in business. So at that education, especially whether it is in STEM, be it in STEM coding, because Jayashree is very much inspiring because in 1990s, uh, women doing chemical engineering and masters, and it's very, very difficult as a subject. It was a forte of men. And where she is today, 
Uh, she's an uh, inspiring role model for millions and millions of uh, girls in India who are doing stuff. So I would appreciate that. So that is how you create. Uh, uh, and she was just giving an opening remarks that uh, see, uh, she was uh, uh, she was facing difficulty in language in the in the state, but she doesn't understand the Tamil language, and she was able to learn that, adapt to that, and then go to US, adapt to that culture, and be wherever she is today. And same goes with Preeti. So I would say that if you have to start the education format and change the education format from a factory model, the education what we have been doing today, the British model, the factory model, the Henry Ford model, which are manufacturers and millions and millions of clubs, and they don't question things, they don't do the questioning of the status quo. That has been our inherent problem. We should definitely change that, but we should give training to women, especially at a very very young age. Ideal age, I would say, is 11 to 14, 15, 16. This is the age when she has to be exposed to entrepreneurship and she has to be communicated how this is going to transform. Because if she does, if she has created a, a, a company of her own where she can employ hundreds of people, she is the boss and she can decide when to focus on work, when to focus on the family. She will have millions of helping hand and she can also do the same thing for her fellow workers. I, I interviewed one of the corporate company. Uh, which is uh, especially giving importance to women, and the feedback was when I employ local women in the particular uh, community uh, place from Bangalore, they said that women do extremely well if they are given a three-hour, four-hour break. Whenever they want break from their company, they can do take the break and they can go home, feed the children, or uh, look after the parents, whatever. The company gives them a break of three to four hours every day because software job is flexible. Uh, they can take the break whenever they need, and they can come back to work. And the CEO was pointing out to me that when these women go and take the break, and when they come back to work, they put eight hours of work into single one hour of work. They bring that kind of productivity because they don't have cognitive dissonance. Because of our cultural bringing up, we develop a cognitive dissonance. This is there in women. That is why they are not able to shine. What will happen to my child? What will happen to my family? This cognitive dissonance is there in women. It is present in our culture, not only our culture, in many cultures. If this cognitive dissonance is removed completely from a very young age, the kind of flowering which you are talking about, which you are talking about today, will definitely happen. And the women-led uh, development and transformation will happen in this country. Thank you very much. Okay, so I want to ask uh, Ulas, Arti, and Chirag if you guys have any questions, uh, please post them uh, in the comment section. If you don't have any questions, you can always reach out to the panelists, uh, uh, or you can even listen to this recorded conversation if you miss some of that. Uh, I think we have about two minutes left, and uh, I, I, I have I have one thing. I just want we said talk about this Adivasi girl girl of yours getting a funding of twenty five million. If you can take thirty seconds and point out that example, that would be most useful. Yeah, actually, the Adivasi woman did not get the twenty-five million funding. It's it's a different woman. She's the one that built brain brain helmet that got the twenty-five million dollar funding. But I'll use this last two minutes because it's a very powerful example. Ad I create first of all, this platform is funded by your government, and there is enough money for any man or woman that aspires to be an entrepreneur in tech or STEM. That we have money. You come to us. We have a lot of programs. We don't throw money at entrepreneurs. We actually gear them towards success. So you might even fail what's called our litmus test of entrepreneurship, in which case we'll guide you towards how you can become an entrepreneur. What do you have to change in order for you to become a successful entrepreneur? But with that said, we had an Adivasi woman that came to I Create, and her great parent grandparents were what they call nadi doctors, pulse doctors. So back in the in the in the boonies, they would just grab a pulse and diagnose medical conditions. That was that was their mechanism to diagnose medicine. And she had 16 different indications that she wanted to kind of automate and make variables out of it. And we just told her, let's focus on one. And the one indication that she focused on was diagnosis of stomach ulcers. And Benjamin Netanyahu and uh, Narendra Modi inaugurated I Create. They spent 45 minutes with the entrepreneurs. So they spent a good four five minutes with this girl, and she kept Narendra Modi's nali, and she was fine. She grabbed mine, I was fine. She grabbed Bibi Netanyahu's wife, and she was fine. And she grabbed Bibi Netanyahu's and said, "You have stomach ulcers." 
and his jaw basically hit the floor. He couldn't believe it. He absolutely could not believe it. We have been helping this woman for several years, trying to convert her science to the wearable. Today, I just asked my CEO, she's in Bangalore as we speak right now, trying to work with companies. She's worked with companies in Ireland, she's worked with companies in Israel, and they're still not able to take her science slash art and convert it into a wearable. That's the power of this woman's knowledge that she possesses and how she wants to convert this into a truly entrepreneurial solution because she herself can only do so much, but if she can convert, and it's a matter of time, I'm absolutely convinced that this woman will be able to reach the board of the wearable. Uh, I've asked this woman that wouldn't look in your eye when you spoke to her. She would not look up. And she presented her solution to two prime ministers. And that is your India. And, and that is the India that I uh, aspire. And I, I, I'm very, like I said, I'm very biased. And that's the India I want to see every morning. Uh, yes. I'm a true believer that India is heretic. Uh, with that, I think uh, we will close the panel. I think, uh, Nandan Kishore, do you have any questions? Arvind, any questions for you? Nope. Well, I would like to thank my uh, extremely uh, well-versed and, and, and very well-rounded panelists. Uh, thank you to all three of you. This has been an amazing uh, panel discussion. Uh, and I think people that listen to this recorded session are going to be extremely happy uh, uh, about how much core enthusiasm uh, about women and their progress actually does exist out there. And what sort of ways and means are there for them to take their dreams, ambitions and careers forward. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate all your time. Thank you, Barak, for moderating. Thank you. Thank thanks, you. Sir. Thank you, yeah, Jayashree. Thank you, Preeti. Thank you, Barak. You've been an amazing moderator and lovely knowing you, Jayashree, and others. Yes. Yes. Look yes. forward to you. staying yeah. connected on LinkedIn with everyone. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me just take a quick picture here. Oh. Uh, and I'm I'm so glad that we have such a nice you know uh, panel here with two men here and it is it's been really fabulous listening to your inspiring comments and the point of view that you shared about how you have employed women and how you know you're seeing the sexes uh, uh, because of women uh, leading uh, you know their uh, their companies and those examples have been very very encouraging. I think women gender uh, gender gap is such a big problem it is something like an environmental issue if we do not start focusing on it now we might face repercussions and some com countries are already facing paying for it because they had they can see the negative growth rate in their come in their countries and this continues this is the future for the rest of the world so we need this wake up call we need to work on it and thank you for highlighting this I'm so glad that uh, I had this opportunity to share this, uh, you know, panel with you all. Thank you all. Yeah. Thank bye you. Bye. 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 bye.